Wait, bits of logos. Not so long ago. Narrow reading. Scott Pilgrim was dating a high schooler. The f was up in the late aughts, early teens with storylines involving adult men dating high schoolers. Andy from The Office was with the yoga shop girl. Seth Rogen's character was with Amber Heard and Pineapple Express. Seriously, Amber f Heard. And in this movie, Scott is not only dating a high schooler, the reason it's a bad fit is that she's too clingy. Knives Chow. She's Chinese. Wicked. Is young Neil playing this game without even looking? We heard clear Zelda action sounds coming out of his Nintendo DS, but he's not even looking at it. Hey Knives, this is Steven Stills. He's the talent. Steven Stills, like the same name as the guy in Buffalo Springfield, later of Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and this movie even sticks a young Neil in here, which has got to be a reference to Neil Young, who was also in Buffalo Springfield and was the young that was added to Crosby, Stills, and Nash. But their drummer Kim doesn't have a connection to either of those bands, and neither does Scott. So it's either a coincidence or a half-baked reference or I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the music in this movie is awesome, inventive, minimalized, and punk as f I'm gonna try and keep the sin removals to a minimum, but this kills me every time. You guys haven't... No, 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 no. We haven't even held hands yet. I think she hugged me once. Yeah, but isn't that going farther than holding hands? And should we even be having this conversation? Where's the Purell? It's been over a year since you got dumped by she who will not be named, so... Captain Voldemarvel? I do not want to be here at all. No kidding, man. If Scott's even the least bit uncomfortable with the high school situation, why wouldn't he meet knives down the street or something? Look, dude, I've met many hipster doofuses. Like, even Cosmo Kramer would be offended by the level of their hipsterdom. But even those assholes wouldn't be caught dead in a Sharpie t-shirt. Hang on, there's no real alphabetical section between Jason Bahana and Beck? No Bengals? No bare naked ladies? Bauhaus? Beach House? Beastie Boys? The f Beatles? You're not alone. What? You're just having some idiotic dream. Which is weirdly placed in this movie, man. I know this whole thing is fantastical, but how did Scott have a premonition that he would meet Ramona? And why would it happen right now? He wakes up in bed, but this starts when he's talking to knives. Here we go. The beginning of a love triangle that will involve some of the most beautiful women on the planet fighting over Michael f***ing Sarah. Hey, what's up? Scott Pilgrim versus Personal Space. As long as you portray stalking in a humorous way, it's not problematic. I heard she kicks all kinds of ass. She's on another level. She has men dying at her feet. How the f*** does everybody know about Ramona, even though she just moved here and is repeatedly shown by herself at this party? I don't want you scaring off the coolest girl at my party, Scott. You mean the girl who's already left the party? And why is Julie so dead set against Scott hitting on Ramona anyway? She's definitely not the coolest girl at the party because she was standing by herself talking to nobody. You're thinking of juggling two chicks. One of the conflicts of this movie is Scott dating knives and Ramona at the same time ever so briefly. But he doesn't even know Ramona wants to go out with him yet. Can he figure that out first before dumping knives? And yes, he does end up technically cheating, but juggling two chicks is a stretch. You of all people should know how sucky it is to get cheated on. Don't you have a job to do? I guess, but one of those hours like, it's clearly late since Scott's home from the party and Wallace is drunk from the night out. But we also saw Stacy calling during the previous day. So is she permanently installed there? I have to order something really cool. I guess Ramona is the only person in Toronto who delivers for Amazon. Dude, this thing claims I have mail. It's amazing what we can do with computers these days. Dude, now I'm reading it. If this is the first email Scott has ever read, how does he even have an email address? How would anyone know what address to send it to? You're Mr. Pilgrim, and it has come to my attention that we will be fighting soon. I know this is a fantasy world, but how does this guy know they're going to fight when Scott hasn't even asked Ramona out yet? Mega Ninja. I can never get past that guy. Don't beat yourself up about it. Unshadowing. Also, why is Scott playing the final dude if it was him that screwed up the two-player game? Shouldn't Knives be playing this asshole? Is there a prize or something? Only a record deal with G-Man Graves. <gasps> Who's that? You don't know? Sure, the guy that scours record stores and is totally versed in the minutia of indie rock has no clue who super producer Gideon is. I like this movie a lot, but there's a ton of unnecessary exposition at the expense of character traits. The movie takes its video game theme way too far by including a pee bar into the festivities. And this pee takes three seconds. Scott, get that prostate check, man. Also, there are a lot more pee references in this movie than you remember. Trust me, there's so much pee in this movie it should book a room at a Russian hotel. Do you want to hang out sometime, get to know each other? If I say yes, we sign for your damn package. Ramona doesn't seem to have any interest in Scott. In fact, he's done everything wrong trying to ask her out. But because of some cosmic comic book weirdness, she accepts. It doesn't even seem to be in her control. Is it possible Gideon is controlling her with the microchip even here? Also, that's another thing. We never know how long that chip is in Ramona's head. Is this why she left New York to go to Toronto? Does the chip have some sort of range issue? Of course, then you have to wonder how all those evil exes started fighting for Gideon. Do they have chips too? If they do, they seem to be perfectly controllable. So why not Ramona? Why would Gideon bother with this if he has a perfect mind control device? What do you do? 
Oh, I'm in between jobs at the moment. Yeah, what the f does Scott do? We see him kicking absolute ass in a few minutes, but he's been a slacker loser pretty much the whole movie leading up to this. So I have to ask why we're rooting for this arguable butthole. <gasps> Dude, I'm changing. She was right to expect privacy, but damn, close the door. And wait, oh. she's kind of into it? This relationship is confusing. I love these exes that show up throughout the movie. Edgar Wright is awesome at these details, and I love this. Oh, hey, it's tonight at the... He's got such a finely tuned sense for pacing and telling a story in an amusing fashion. And to think they wouldn't let this guy do Ant-Man in the way he wanted. Anyway, we're moving us in. This next band is from Toronto. Discount Canadian Ben Folt. I love this scene so much. This is just the band playing at the Battle of the Bands, but Edgar Wright once again sticks in these great details. Kim was upset that the previous band had a girl drummer, and now she's on stage giving a look to her right, and there's the other band's girl drummer giving her the stare of death. Such a funny cutaway, and one of the reasons why this movie is so enjoyable. Mr. Pilgrim! Why'd Patel choose this point? to confront Scott. He could have waited until the end of the song or jumped in before they started and had the same effect. But I was so vibing out to garbage trucks, so f*** this guy. But haven't they already been fighting? Did Scott's 64 hit combo not count? Why does this pop up on screen now? It was football season and for some reason, all the little jocks wanted me. Matthew was the only non-white, non-jock boy in town. Why did he have to be non-white? And seriously, he was the only one? So everybody was either white or jock or both except this guy? Did you go to school at Dick Sporting Goods? So the two of us joined forces, and we took them all down. For what? For wanting you? There seemed to be more than a few holes in this story. If you want to fight me... What? Oh, this movie is sinning itself, guys. Let's become sentient. Run! Did Matthew seriously just kill that entire band? I don't care that this movie is pretty fantastical and He literally just killed that band. Wallace! Again? Choosing anyone except Anna Kendrick. If we're gonna date, you may have to defeat my seven evil exes. How does she inherently know this unless everybody she dates has to fight her evil exes? Does that mean we can make out? Sure. Cool. F*** you, weird piped-in crowd noise. This moment is not all worthy. She basically resigned herself to kissing this asshole, and they continue to have zero chemistry together. He's this pretty good skater. No, he's this pretty good actor. It's filming a Winifred Haley movie in Toronto right now. Kind of amazing that the New York-based Ramona has so many evil exes in Toronto right now. Sure, Gideon is the mastermind behind Scott fighting the evil exes, but how does he control what movies get shot where? Like, probably the only famous person not in Toronto, ironically enough, is Drake. Listen, I was thinking we should break up or whatever. Knives out. What's young Neil's purpose in this band? He's at all the practices and the gigs, but he's not formally involved until he takes over for Scott. At this point, he's less useful than that guy that danced on stage during the Mighty Mighty Boston shows. Sounds like a bad time. Bad time? <laughs> not really. It was. It was a mutual thing. It wasn't. Damn, Ron Howard's narrator voice must have been smoking too many cigarettes. Mr. Lee? Lucas Lee. Oh. Of course Lucas is one of the evil exes. What would have happened if Scott and Ramona hadn't come to this shoot? Would Lucas have had to track him down at his house? At the record shop? Band practice? Comcast. What's up? How's life? Sure, it's possible Ramona is already wearing the G-chip that attaches her to Gideon. But does that affect her ability to do jack when the other exes kick Scott's ass? She doesn't say one word or look concerned or anything. Sometimes I let him do the wide shots. When I feel like getting blazed back in my Winnie. <laughs> Chris Evans has been awesome for longer than you realized, hasn't he? <laughs> Doesn't seem like you're really fighting Ramona's evil exes when you're fighting a whole team of other people's evil exes. After seeing Scott get thrown into the castle, and after seeing him get beat down by Lee's stunt team for a while until he turned the tide, and enduring this kick, I'm wondering how many hit points Scott has. Prepare to feel the wrath of the League of Evil Exes. I don't know exactly what's real and what's not in this movie, but I'm pretty sure they're actually shooting a movie here. And no one from the production gives a rat's ass about their lead actor getting into a huge fight while ripping down the set. Well, I'm really, really not up for this, whatever it is. Okay, little chicken. I'll see you later. He can do this? Like, couldn't he just continue to date Ramona and defer the battles indefinitely? What did you do with my sister? Scott came in here to talk to his sister, and she's just outside, but then decides to order a coffee. I don't know why he doesn't just run out of the coffee shop to talk to her. So I can just get my coffee over here? Wait, Ramona's been there the whole time? How did he not notice her the whole time he's been here? It's my ex. God damn it, how is he not seeing anyone in this coffee shop right now? Caramel Macchiato! Pilgrim. This bit with Aubrey Plaza is hilarious, but did she really just call him Pilgrim? Seemed like this character would be a little more creative with her pejoratives. I have to assume Wallace is 
both of these dudes in bed with him. So is Scott just hanging out in the same bed while everyone else is banging each other? Oh God, do I look so good? Yes, you do. And I wish your character had anything else to do other than pine over the douchey douche that douched all over you. The guy on base? Oh yeah. That's Todd. First off, why didn't Ramona give any indication that Todd would be there tonight? I know Scott has to fight him, and but is she not allowed to say anything? Second, why are they even still there? Scott didn't even want to play the show, but now that they did, they're sticking around for his ex's headlining act? I'm not going to play the music here for fear of Brie Larson and the original band who did this, Metric, jumping out of my TV with a bunch of copyright lawyers, but this song f***ing rules. The writing, the performance, the brie all deserving of a sin-off. Envy Adams would like you all to come backstage. What's Envy's thing here? She dumped Scott, but it was apparently because she moved out of town, then met Todd. She certainly wasn't billed as a vindictive asshole, like she's acting here. I know all this is to set up the fight between Scott and Todd, but I cannot figure out what's up with Envy acting like this as soon as she arrived in Toronto. All of us? Did I stutter? Why is the trademark of Aubrey Plaza's character to say bleep words when she didn't do any of that at her party or the record shop when we first met her? Hey, Ramona. Holy f Captain Marvel and Superman are in this band? Jesus. They probably get in a lot of boring fights with other bands because they're too powerful with almost no weaknesses. I've kissed the lips that kiss you! Whoa, I thought the whole relationship was super chaste so that the movie could hedge its bet on the likability of the protagonist. But if they made out, what else did Scott and Knives do? And should I be backing away slowly from this movie now? Fun in Toronto. <laughs> That's it! <gasps> you cocky cock! <laughs> God damn, I love this line so much. I'd almost take a cent off for it if the movie didn't just yada yada the f out of a grown man punching a teenage girl in the face a few seconds ago. You know, these leftover plastic cups on the floor are hilarious, but nearly everybody who was enjoying the show was holding up glass bottles and basically only one plastic cup is visible during the Clash at Demon Head set. It's only my first offense, so don't I get three strikes? Why would you get three strikes for straying away from your vegan diet? And why wouldn't you get warned about your offenses before the third strike? This is basically Superman's kryptonite, isn't it? Also, the other two offenses were times where Todd knowingly ingested non-vegan stuff, or at least didn't research it carefully enough. Here, he was tricked. How does that even count? On April 4th, 7.30 p.m., you partook a plate of chicken parmesan. A guy who's vegan, who stupidly eats chicken parmesan, has been eating way more non-vegan things than this. You once were a vegan. But now you will be gone. Look, even someone like me that loves this line realizes how dumb it is. Let's face it, the only reason why Ramona gets to beat Roxy's ass, and it counts in this weird little game, is that the movie didn't want to show Scott beating Roxy up and still try and call him a hero. She was ready to fight earlier, but Scott just said he didn't want to, and apparently that was enough to get him off the hook. Oh, sure, they addressed this later in the fight, but is this really a fight between Scott and Roxy? I don't think so. You know that near one-shot fight between Scott and Lucas's henchmen a few minutes ago? Well, this sequence is so hyper-edited, it feels like it's from a completely different movie. <laughs> Scott wins this fight by orgasming this woman to death. Is there anyone at this party that you haven't slept with? Yeah, he's a jealous boyfriend and all, but this mean comment comes out of nowhere, really. It's not like they've been at this party and they keep running into a bunch of her exes. They ran into one ex, and suddenly he's like, you f everybody, haven't you? Caddy and Aggie twins just happen to be the next band in the battle. Again, I'm not sure how the American Ramona has so many exes wandering around in Toronto doing regular work things, but Gideon must be the most genius mastermind ever to get everyone in town at the same time. Jason Schwartzman plays a smarmy butthole in a movie cliche. Does Gideon want them to finish Scott or to do it himself? It's almost like he set the League of Exes up to fail by incrementally increasing the powers of the opponents, right? What would have happened if Matthew Patel had fried Scott way back at the beginning? Would the rest of the League even have been in Toronto? We are sex bubbles and we're here to make you think about death and get sad and stuff! <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help myself from taking another sin off. This is one of the most unique movies I've ever seen. So look, in the last fight, they actually addressed that Scott needed to use his own fist to beat Roxy. This battle requires his whole band, and they're fighting against CGI creatures created by their music. The bands are completely different, too. One is a garage band, and the other is a twin set of keyboard players. I don't know how you out rock each other this way, or why it counts. It's completely weird and wonderful to watch, but it's sinful as f Also, this fight is conceptually badass, but... Just like Godzilla King of the Monsters, we keep cutting back to the goddamn humans instead of watching a full take of the monsters actually beating on each other. And I apologize to this movie for comparing it to Godzilla King of the Monsters, but it had to be done. What are you doing? Getting a life. Why does Scott get a one-up here? Wasn't he just as good at kicking ass in the previous battles? I know you have reasons for not wanting to talk about your past. And the metaphor in this movie is a good one. Our past relationships affect our current ones. We are guarded about not getting hurt, and we don't want our significant others comparing themselves to people we've dated in the past. The movie, as silly as it is, is about 
stop being happy that your significant other chose you. And those people in the past don't matter anymore, and you should stop measuring yourself against them. Defeating evil exes is not about being better than them, but to forget them. It's wild stuff for a comic book video game movie. I'll remove three sins for it. I mean, if it wasn't for me, Ramona would never have been with you, but if it wasn't for you, she wouldn't have gotten back with me. I like to think Gideon is Max Fisher, under a different name, still scheming evil ways to get the girl, only with a more grown-up and more dangerous approach. Ah! Turn off the light! Given how many partners Wallace brings in, how has this not happened many times before? Presumably, you just saw some guy's junk. Uh, no. Looked like everything was under the covers there. And besides, seeing some junk ain't the worst thing that could happen to anybody. Just ask that show Euphoria. Scott Earn, the power of love. I think this is all very cool, but could you imagine actually playing this video game? What are the f rules, man? <laughs> I'll assume Nimes was here for the show, but why the f would she be armed to the teeth? I'm not talking to you! I'm talking to her! Okay, if that's the case, why did you very specifically attack Gideon? Not like Ramona was anywhere near you. You broke the heart that broke mine! Sounds inconsequential! I know almost all this is done with stunt work and bravo to that crew, but the way Edgar Wright stages this fight at the end makes it so believable and kinetic and exciting, even in a fantastical framework. Damn it, I'm gonna give a sin back again, but I swear to God it's the last one. But you can't cheat death. Gideon, you know this is a video game, right? You know Scott was gifted a life after he beat the keyboard twins. It was only slightly less bull than when Simon Pegg threw Wade that magic quarter in Ready Player One. Truth is, it was me who was obsessed. Scott only gets this information after he dies, but how does that work? Did Ramona make a special trip to the afterlife to fill him in on the background information between she and Gideon? This is as absurd as the naked Native American dude giving the message to Jim Morrison in the doors. Second password. <laughs> I understand Gideon is a dick, but are all of his underlings evil too? Like, is Scott just straight up murdering right now, or are these NPCs? This is the comic book is better than the movie. Oh, well. The first time Scott went through here, this guy was saying, the first album is better than the first album, which I guess was a joke on hipster dumbasses. But the setup is exactly the same as the last time, only Scott beat up the password guards instead of giving them the passwords. So how did the conversation change? <laughs> oh, I guess with Gideon on the ground, she decided to attack the right person this time. Are we done with the hugging and learning? Sure, sure, it's a video game and all, but if you are going to show me Gideon dying, complete with the score and shit, then you don't get to bring him back. I know he didn't turn into coins, but why the 7,000 point score if he's not dead? He doesn't even come back as a Sephiroth. I feel robbed. <laughs> now this game is just making it up as it goes along. You made me swallow my gum. It's gonna be in my digestive tract for seven years! Gideon's most evil contribution to the film is spreading this well-known myth. I have noted how good the choreography is in this last sequence, but as soon as Gideon pulls out that over-pixelated sword, watching this turns into an instant migraine. Man, here's yet another beatdown of a toxic male character in which Death Proof's Mary Elizabeth Winstead doesn't get to participate. Do you know how long it took? to get all the evil exes contact information so I could form this stupid league? Like two hours! That's hilarious, but I'm guessing it took you way more than that just to get Matthew Patel's information, considering he was Ramona's seventh grade boyfriend that she only dated for a week and a half. Man, that's an awful lot of points for a game that's been showing us just a few thousand for each boss he defeated. Wasn't this club packed a few minutes ago? I know Scott took out a bunch of minions, but there were other real people here, right? Hell, even the guy from the party earlier was talking about comic books. No one stuck around to watch the battle even out of curiosity. Solo round. French toast with like bananas on it. You get bacon on the side. I'm liking that. <laughs> you should probably get it cut. Boy, Scott sure did get off the hook for the whole cheating scandal he admitted to both women just a few minutes ago, didn't he? Thought maybe we could try again. I swear to God, this movie has more endings than Avengers Endgame. I don't know what you're talking about. You're gonna learn how to talk right, understand? We got ways of making you pronounce the letter O. I'm feeling that's for you, gay. I'm not your guy, buddy. He's not your buddy, friend. I'm not your friend, gay. Okay, enough! I was sitting right there the whole time. Yeah, way to plant, Ann. You once were a vegan, but now you will be gone. And when you're gone, you stay gone, or you be gone. Between you and I, the whole League of Evil Lexus thing, I was in a really dark place when I put that together. I was gonna try and have that tree over there fall on you. That is evil. Like it's the fruits of the devil. What happens if the engine stops? We all freeze and die. Oh no, uh, correction, it is not a good morning for my POV because you're here and I hate you. What do you mean you don't drink? I distinctly remember you being very drunk on a couple of G&T's. Hey. <laughs> ah! It is I, 
Matthew Patel. Patel? Well, how am I gonna make a living on these deadbeats? Where'd you get this from, a morgue? Is he a pirate? Are you a pirate? But I don't wanna be a pirate! We allowed you into our home. We let you watch our granddad. We welcomed you into our family. <laughs> and now you think you can steal it from us? He really does. Wait. Mm.